This is a sustainer case. And inside of the case is the Mafel MT55CC. You're probably wondering if it's worth the high price point. You may be also wondering if it's a good saw or not. The best way to describe it is, it's a near perfect track saw. In this video, not only am I going to be showing you this Mafel MT55CC, but also I want to give you some quick tips on how to use this tool effectively. A track saw, also known as a plunge saw, is a power tool used for straight, precise cuts in primarily wood, but I've used it on plastic and other materials. It consists of a circular saw blade mounted on a guide rail that allows for accurate and consistent cuts over long distances. A plunge saw is ideal for cutting large sheet goods such as plywood, MDF, OSB or a particle board. The guide rail ensures accurate and straight cuts over long distances and the plunge mechanism allows you to start and stop the cut in the exact place you want. It is also amazing at cutting worktops, making cutouts for sinks or stovetops. And if you need to trim a door or a panel to fit precisely, a plunge saw can make the job easier, faster and more accurate than a traditional circular saw. And so if you're serious about precision and accuracy, a track saw is a way to go. Ever since I got my plunge saw, my circular saw seldom gets used. Maybe three to four times a year when I need to cut something down, trim something down quickly, but I don't do a lot of carpentry. I mostly deal with sheet goods. I have done a ton of research before buying this saw a couple of years ago, so you don't have to. And in my opinion, the Mafel MT55CC is the best track saw out there. It has a 1400 watt motor, making it the most powerful saw in its category. That means it can cut through even the toughest of materials with ease. No more struggling with thick pieces of wood or your blade becoming dull or some very tough twisty grains. It just plows through everything. This saw is equipped with a soft start as well as a really effective power fluctuation where it senses some resistance, maybe going through a knot in wood or something, and it may increase power to keep things smooth. It also has this speed adjustment Although, since I've bought this saw, I've never moved it from the setting of 6. But power isn't everything, right? You also need precision. And that's where the Mafel MT55 really shines. This saw has a unique rail system that ensures perfect cuts every time. It's also incredibly easy to use with an intuitive control system that makes adjusting it a breeze. The score cut is a real piece of engineering too where it moves the blade by a fraction of a millimeter through the score cut and it reduces the amount of tear out on your wood and chipping in the laminate. Other features of this saw include incredible dust collection thanks to its shape it sends the particle straight into this outlet. The adjustable guide is very effective on improving dust collection. In doing research for this video, for quick short cuts, I've heard of people using a dust bag instead of a vacuum. I've never tested this myself. Also, the electronic kickback, which has saved my hands more than a couple of times, and the ability to cut several sheets at a time. Actually, let me show you. See this? This is my learning curve of using a plunge saw where I either didn't place the saw correctly on the track or I started the cut whilst the blade was already touching the piece of wood and don't copy my mistakes and the saw starts spinning and it very quickly stops before it escapes it's reached literally fraction of a second on your first cut on a new rail, you cut into the rubber edge of the track which then gives you a guide where all your cuts will be. Make sure you do your first cut without using the score cut function. If you have more than one blade, make sure that they are the same thickness. I got rid of my Mafel blade altogether. And so if you do your first cut with a thick blade and then put on a thinner blade on, 
The track placement won't show you a precise representation of the cut line. You can use this screw to fine tune the accuracy of your saw depth. Best to do this whilst the saw is on track. Use some scrap wood. You can get a 3mm thick piece of plywood with another scrap underneath. Set the saw to 3mm and then adjust the screw until it cuts through the 3mm piece without damaging the piece underneath. And if you're wondering, for this brand of saw, tracks are somewhat universal. You can use rails from Maffel and Bosch and also if you want to use a Festool track you can actually remove this black bit over here and this will mount on a Festool rail. I don't have anything else but the 1.6 meter rail and it's been sufficient for me. But the joining piece for the Maffel rail is very beefy and you can tell that it should do an incredible job at keeping your two rails together when you need to do the uber long cuts. If the saw isn't sliding well on the rail or it is too loose, you can use these dials to dial it in. You want to set it where it just stops resisting but it's not too loose. Watch how this indicator moves as I change the bevel angle. It's because the line of the cut moves away from the rail with the increase of your bevel angle. This indicator helps with showing where the edge of your cut will be. I didn't get many of the accessories available for this saw, but if you are planning to do your 45 degree bevels, these rail clamps are useful as the saw has a tendency to fall off the track. And you will be busy keeping your left hand down on the base plate of the saw. The table you see me do this demonstration on has been beveled with this exact saw and these clamps. To activate the negative angle, unlock the bevel mechanism and then slide this button. Rotate this red knob to reset the depth of the cut indicator. This is off track and this is on track. So now that you've heard me talk about all the pros, you may be wondering, are there any cons? Well, if you look over here, these are the Festool brand colors. It means I got rid of the original Maffel blade and got myself two different blades because the Maffel blade is I think 1.8 millimeter in thickness whereas the Festool and a Diablo equivalent are I think around 2.2 and those few tenths of a millimeter make all the difference. The original Maffel blade when doing very deep cuts in a worktop would go off angle a little bit because of that reduced thickness and switching to a thicker blade fixed all the problems. To change the blade you first press the silver safety lock button and then you lift up this lever. The motor is then locked in position and you can use the supplied allen key to change your blade. So whether you're a professional furniture maker, a carpenter who wants to cut up some sheets or a DIY enthusiast, this Maffel saw is an excellent choice that offers both power and precision. Check out another one of my videos over here and thank you for watching.